Hey ladies, today is Sunday, May 2nd, 2021. Um, and just like the title of this video says, um, my second IVF cycle was canceled. Um, and why? So I was supposed to start my cycle... Um, or start the injections for this for this IVF cycle probably um well sometime last week around the twenty second or twenty third which is when my period was pre um predicted to come on I've been doing the estrogen estrogen um, patches excuse me um since April fourteenth I'm actually still doing them. And so I've been doing the age, the estrogen patches since April 14th and um, I change them every other day. So one box is eight patches. So that was a 16 day supply and I actually had to refill that and get another box because I'm still doing the patches. And so um, I've been doing that and I've been having some cramping and... Um, I guess a little bit of nausea here and there. And then on the past, I guess, not this Sunday, but like two Sundays ago, I started spotting. And I was spotting um, and it's it lasted for like two days and then it stopped. And I thought that was my period coming on, but it never came on. It never progressed to a period. So I was concerned that something was wrong, but one of the side effects of the estrogen patches is spotting. Matter of fact, the estrogen patches can cause quite a few side effects. Not everyone will get them. Everybody's body is different. So, you know, to each their own, but it could be spotting, in nausea, vomiting. I think I remember reading diarrhea um, on, the, on the pamphlet that comes with the the with the estrogen patches, so cramping, um, and, and so things that I was experiencing, I was just kind of thinking like, okay, maybe these are a side effect of the estrogen patches. So when my period didn't start, I was a little concerned, but not really, because it was a little early for it to start. Um, it wasn't due for about another three or four days, but the spotting, I just, I thought it was the patches. I spoke to my doctor's office. They said it could be the patches. It could have been my period starting, but if it progressed to a full period, but it never did. Um, so I was a little concerned, especially as days went by and I was thinking, okay, what's going on? What is, you know, my cycle has been, I guess, unpredictable to say the least, um, since my first postpartum period, which was only this past January. And then, you know, I've been trying to regulate my cycle since and, and really get something that's more consistent. So, um, and in the midst of that, I decided to just move forward with IVF because, you know, I'm 38 and not getting any younger here. So I figured, let me, um, you know, go ahead and, and move forward with that. Especially because when I went to the doctor, all my numbers always look good. Like all my numbers look really good. My um, my FSH numbers were good. I have a good um, ovarian reserve, so follicles look great. So there is no medical reason why, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to get pregnant on my own. My husband's uh, had a sperm or semen analysis. It came back good. So everything looked great. Um, so it was just kind of like, okay, what's going on? Why is my period not coming on? So anyway, I called the doctor's office. They scheduled me to come in and do run a blood test. I went in this past Monday, um, which was April 26th. And they did all these, hor I guess, trying to see where my hormone levels are to figure out why my period hadn't come on. So they called me and... I said to, you know, the nurse called me and she said, well, I need to discuss your results with the doctor, which was a little concerning because I'm like, she was like, well, I just, you know, um, I have your, your numbers and we just want to look at, you know, why your period hasn't come on. And I said to her, now I'm not a doctor. 
I said to her, I said, um, did you check for pregnancy? And she said, no, we didn't. So, but I will have them add that. And I'm thinking, okay, wouldn't that have been like your first question? Like period hasn't come on. And, you know, since that's what I was thinking. And since she calls me, you know, she was talking about what the hormone levels were. And I'm like, none of that means anything to me. <laughs> um, and so she calls me back, probably like, she said, I'll call you back. We'll have them check for that and we'll get back to you. Calls me back about four hours later. And I was a little annoyed during that time because I'm thinking, why should I have to mention that? Were you, were you not going to check? Well, like, you know, it's pretty basic, I would think. I do go to a center of excellence, though, and, um, you know, they're supposed to be some of the best people. Uh, one of the, the place that I go is one of the best in the country for fertility. It's like, I think it's like number two in the country or something. Um, the number one place is like across the country from me. So not going there, but it's like one of the best places to go. So anyway, um, so I, so, but they weren't acting like it's this day, but I, whatever. So she calls me back and she's like, congratulations, you're pregnant. So that is why we canceled IVF number two, because apparently I don't need to do it, um, which was kind of really unexpected to me, which it shouldn't be. I mean, like you have sex, you could get pregnant, yada, yada. But I did not, I mean, like I really only, um, had sex once that cycle. And so I know it only takes once. I know people say that all the time. It's funny. But I was actually like, okay, well, I'm going to do IVF, so I'm just going to, you know, not really try. And, and we hadn't actually been trying long because my first postpartum period was in January. And that kind of came on, you know, I guess by surprise. And then I only really tried. I didn't really try in February. I was trying to figure out my cycle. So I was, you know, I hadn't really figured it out. Um, with the ovulation test strips. And so really just March and April. So yeah, so I won't be doing IVF. <laughs> um, so sorry to those who want to follow my cycle, but you'll have to kind of figure it out. Um, I did document my first IVF cycle and, um, you know, I in detail, in all detail. I like think I did a video every day. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, there is that, but there will not be an IVF cycle number two. Um, and you know, it's funny because I've never gotten pregnant naturally before. So this is the first time. And so, um, that nausea and the spotting was probably implantation bleeding and the nausea was probably early, um, you know, pregnancy symptoms. And then I was having tenderness in my breast, which I chalked up to weaning with well, two things to weaning. And also because, um, the patches, that's another side effect. The patches are soreness in breast, but apparently no, um, all of that was related to, um, probably, well, I mean, I don't really know what the culprit is, but those are all early pregnancy symptoms as well. And it's weird because, I never had really early early pregnancy symptoms with my um my first pregnancy with Michaela. I never had those. Like I just I didn't feel like anything was different. It took a while and then all of a sudden I started getting like a like morning sickness. But for like I don't know, for a while there was there were no symptoms even after they confirmed pregnancy and everything. I kind of felt like maybe they were wrong cuz I don't feel anything. Where like this time I had all these symptoms. And I still continue to have symptoms, even though the nausea thankfully hasn't gotten bad yet. It's still really early. Um, and there's like, sometimes I feel like some, um, some like pressure in my like lower abdomen, which is apparently also an early pregnancy symptoms. Which I didn't ex actually start experiencing that until after I knew um, the doctor had confirmed pregnancy, but it's kind of weird because I'm like having all these symptoms, but again, it's a second pregnancy. So second pregnancies can be dead. So yeah, second pregnancies can be, um, you know, can be different. So in every, or well, all pregnancies are different first, second, 10th, you know, whatever you're on. Um, so that, that was kind of, um, 
you know, a shocker to me because I wasn't expecting to get that news. Um, um, I don't know why I wasn't, but you know, I'm just, it, I feel like it's still like sinking in because I was like all geared up to do IVF and I had all this medication. I have not had, I have all this medication, all this medication. And, um, that has been untouched, unused. I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do with that? I guess I could, um, donate it, you know, I guess take it to the doctor's office at some point, um, and donate it to someone or donate it to the, the office and let them figure out whomever they're going to give, give it to. But, um, yeah, it's just, I, you know, I, I like, was really had my mindset to do IVF and was psyching myself up to do these injections. And it's funny because I didn't even want to do IVF. You know, I kept doing videos saying, I don't even really want to do it because I didn't want to go out and expose myself um, to, you know, potentially catching COVID during that period. And my doctor didn't recommend getting the vaccine while you're doing IVF. And also she doesn't recommend getting the vaccine during the first trimester of pregnancy. So I was like, oh, you got to go in this doctor office constantly and expose yourself. And I, <laughs> I just didn't want to do that. And they, um, to handle COVID, what the doctor office was doing was they were testing you for COVID um, on your first day, which I never got to, your first day IVF. And then they were testing again for at retrieval time. And if, if either one of those tests came back positive, they were going to cancel the cycle. Um, so yeah, I never got to that point. So they never, um, you know, but that's how they're handling COVID at, um, at the place where I go. So it's just, um, interesting. So I was like, Oh, I don't want to go, you know, um, and so now I don't have to, although, my fertility doctor, although this is a 100% natural pregnancy, is still following the pregnancy. She, um, they still have me doing these estrogen patches, which I find like, I'm kind of like, why? Because it's a natural pregnancy and I shouldn't have to really be doing anything assisted. But their point was, or their thought is that since I was on the estrogen patches, when I became pregnant. They did not want my estrogen to suddenly drop by just stopping the patches. So they wanted me to use them for a few more days, which is why I'm still doing them, which is why I had to refill the box um, of patches because they didn't want my estrogen levels to drop. Um, because I know in early pregnancy, estrogen and you know progesterone are, are like some of the key hormones that your body would normally which naturally produce, which my body is producing, but they just, I don't know, they're being overly cautious, which is just, is, is, I mean, I guess it's good. Listen, you know, um, black women with pregnancy and childbirth, it, and babies, black babies and all of that, you know, our numbers aren't, aren't great, um, which I don't even want to talk about right now, but you know, so, um, so I guess any doctor being extra cautious, I'm trying to go with, and they are still following the pregnancy until they can release me to an OB, which I thought they would have released me right away because I didn't do any fertility this time. Um, but they were saying that, um, so this coming week I'll do a ultrasound, which should be like a five week ultrasound. And then, um, we'll see from there because they might do two to three ultrasounds before they release me to the OB. Now I'm like, okay, I guess that's great. This first ultrasound apparently is just to find, just to make sure that the pregnancy is placed where it's supposed to be placed. Um, even though they had nothing to do with placing it, but <laughs> just place where it's supposed to be placed. Um, and this is something typically that they do with IVF because IVF, um, leads to in higher rate of ectopic pregnancies. And so um, it isn't always placed where it's supposed to be placed with fertility. I know IVF in particular, but it may be other fertility methods that do that as well. Um, so that is something that they typically do. They do a very early ultrasound um, and usually a, a couple. Um, oddly enough, my last pregnancy, which was an IVF pregnancy and this one is not, um, my last pregnancy, I only had one ultrasound before I uh, was released to my OB and I think it was around like six weeks 
six, maybe six, six or seven. I don't remember, but um, I was able to hear the heartbeat and all of that and everything clearly looked fine. But um, this time is they said it's probably too early to hear a heartbeat, but they were just trying. They're just doing this ultrasound to make sure everything looks fine. And they might be a little annoyed that, not annoyed, but they might be, you know, whatever, that they missed out on all that IVF money for this cycle. <laughs> so they're like, listen, we're still going to get ours. We're still going to get something, even though ultrasound is nothing compared to the tens of thousands of dollars, I guess, they would have gotten for IVF. Um, they're like, listen, we'll still follow the pregnancy until then. So, um, you know, that's cool. And um, I'll continue to keep you updated. The thing that's a little odd, though, is that, like, when they told me on Monday, they said I was four, you know, they were trying to calculate. And she was like, okay, you're about four weeks pregnant. And it's weird because pregnancy calculating is so odd. Like, I'm, there's no such thing as being, like, one or two weeks pregnant. So as soon as you, you know, for most people, usually the earliest you can detect it especially on a home pregnancy test maybe if you do a blood test they can get it a little earlier but it's usually like four weeks and um they say four weeks but if you look at when one week pregnant is one week pregnant like four weeks ago um or almost five weeks now for me my period was on so I wasn't pregnant so you know so like they count like ovulation and all of that in the weeks of pregnancy where you know, you're not necessarily pregnant then. And so there's no real such, there's like body preparation is like weeks one and two to be pregnant. Um, so that's why I guess it goes to 40 weeks, but it's like pregnancy counting is so weird to me because it's like, it's really, it's really not four or five weeks pregnant, but whatever, that's the way they do it. I, you know, I don't know why, but, um, so that's it, ladies. So that's where I am now. Um, and I will continue to keep you posted, but not about IVF. I'm done. Um, so pregnancy number two, you know, we've moved on. So, <laughs> all right, take care and I will talk to you soon. Stay safe.